Welcome back to Calculus 2. In this lecture, we're going to continue learning about ways to find volumes for solids with a method known as volume by using cylindrical shells, or the shell method. All right, now the previous method, basically how we came up with volume for solids or revolution, dealt with taking a region and then rotating it around the x-axis. When we have y and various boundary curves given as functions of x, and we rotate around the x-axis, we had those disk and washer methods appropriate for that. Well, we didn't talk about it at the time. What if we have a region, and instead we rotate it here around the y-axis? We can do that, but the problem becomes a little harder to uh, kind of approximate it with a certain object and certain pieces. Well, our basic idea that we're going to use is to try to split or slice this into regular pieces due to how the um, solid is obtained by rotating it around the y-axis. We're not going to be doing cross sections like we did previously. What's going to work here in this standard calculus topic is we basically use a large number of thin cylindrical shells. So you can kind of see in the sketch, you have your upper boundary curve. And if we take a look at one of those, I don't want to say slices, but rectangles there, that is going to be the thickness of one shell. And then that height varies underneath the function y equals f of x. So the height of each shell can change. And as we stack multiple shells inside one another, kind of extending along the object, that'll be a good approximation to the solid. Now we're not actually gonna carry this out in detail, but we'll at least try to find the volume for one of these thin cylindrical shells. So let's get into that. Recall the main idea of integration, adding up or summing small pieces. We'll take a look at different pieces here, thin cylindrical shells. All right, now our starting place is to put in work to find the volume of one cylindrical shell. The thought is, if we can find the volume of one of these approximating pieces, we then sum all them up, that summing turns into an integral formula. Delta x in the limit passes to dx. All right, let's take a look at a visualization. So hopefully we can see that. We have the upper curve, which is acting as a kind of a, the upper part that determines the height of each shell. And then as before, we wanna have a thin or narrow quantity. So we're gonna take the width of each shell to be very thin, delta x. All right, we're not doing an approximation with rectangles here. I realize it looks similar, but we then take that shell, that rectangle, and rotate it around the y-axis. As we rotate that, it generates and sweeps out a shell around the y-axis. Also notice on the sketch on the left, that kind of uh, uh, edge for that rectangular shell is x distance from the axis of rotation. That little distance x there is going to play a role. All right, so here on the right, we have one cylindrical shell sketched corresponding here. You can see the height of that shell is given by the function value, since uh, we want the shells to be underneath that function. All right, so the height of the shell is given by the function value, similar idea we used before. We have the thickness or width of each shell, delta x, and then the distance from the axis of rotation, the y-axis, to that shell is x. Now what we have to do is find the volume for this. We could try to use the uh, kind of volume formula for a cylinder and then subtract out the big hole in the middle, but um, I'll confess I sometimes forget the volume for a cylinder. That's okay we know how to find volume for a rectangular cube. So we're gonna to try to split 
this uh, shell to make it look like a rectangular cube. Bear with me, you might see where this is going, and then we'll have a much easier way to arrive at the volume for one shell. This is kind of one of my uh, favorite parts of the um, part of Calc 2 when dealing with geometric quantities. It gives you some, uh, some nice insight into how we uh, find these volume formulas. All right, the trick here is we're basically going to take one of these shells and then cut it right up the middle and unravel it. And the thought is, if we unravel that shell and stretch it out, it looks like here a rectangle. Now, we're calling this really a rectangular box since there is a very small depth in this orientation, the width of the shell, delta x. So it is three-dimensional, it's very thin, and what we have to do is we have the height of this box as f of x, we have the width or depth as delta x, we have to determine the length. Now what benefit do we have from the axis of rotation and then cutting it and unraveling it? Well, take a look at what x is playing in that sketch. You might be able to see it kind of in the hole there, that little red x. That is the distance from the axis of rotation to this specific general approximating shell. Due to how we've rotated around the y-axis, we can basically look face on at that shell and the total distance around, we would call that the circumference of a circle. Now the radius here, from the uh, center to the shell, the edge, the radius is x. So that total length around the shell is the circumference 2 pi r. And since we've cut and unraveled, we shouldn't have changed the length, just how it looks. That length now is 2 pi times the radius. The radius is given by that little extra factor of x. So the length of a rectangular box, the length all the way around, the circumference of the cylindrical shell is 2 pi x. And basically, that is it. The mathematical approach, much more rigorous. This is a good approach as how you might apply uh, uh, arguments for volume, uh, I'm sorry, integral formulas within your science and engineering courses. Sometimes it's good to be less rigorous to have more idea of uh, the intuition behind it. All right, now we have all three dimensions. The volume of a rectangular box should be the length times the width times the height. And if we multiply all three of those quantities, 2 pi x, f of x, and delta x, we get the volume of one cylindrical shell. Now at this point, you probably know what happens. That's the volume of one shell. We then add, sum, or integrate all those cylindrical shells. So this volume formula for one shell in the limit as we use uh, more shells passes to this exact volume formula, the integral from a to b of 2 pi x times f of x. And we integrate that with respect to x. f of x is the upper edge kind of uh, that gives you the profile for the, uh, the solid, determining the heights of the shells. x is the distance from the axis of rotation to the shell. Now be careful in this formula, it's worth copying down. This is known as the shell method. In that integral formula, what I find a lot of students miss is that factor of x. So notice the formula, it's 2 pi x times f of x. Don't forget that factor of x. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at a simple example. So the question is going to ask us here, Find the volume obtained by rotating the region bounded by the given curves or graphs, y equals x squared plus 1, y equals 0, x equals 0, and x equals 2. So far, it sounds similar to various, uh, I'll say, disk and washer method problems. But notice the difference. We're not rotating around the x-axis. We're rotating around the y-axis. So the clue here, how we're going to set this up, it's not the disk or washer method, when we have functions given as functions of x for the boundary functions, and the region is rotated around the y-axis, 
That's the clue that we're going to use the shell method. So if we rotate around the x-axis, we use disk or washer method. Rotating around the y-axis here requires the shell method. So with that in mind, maybe pause the video. Give yourself an attempt at this. Once you have the sketch, pretty much the function is given to you. It's a pretty straightforward plug and chug problem. We'll check in in a few minutes. All right, let's go ahead and go through example one here. So first let's start with a sketch. So we have our kind of a boundary curve for the profile of the solid rotated around the y-axis now, given as y equals x squared plus one. So that is the function f of x referenced in the general formula. Uh, this one I didn't want to attempt to sketch by hand what the uh, true solid would look like. So here's just kind of a side on profile. It looks kind of like a bowl. All right, and we're going to find the volume for this region rotated around the y-axis. All right, so we have the function. It's pretty much given to us. We plug that into the volume formula, 2 pi x times f of x. So that extra factor of x, we can multiply it into parentheses, the function of x, and have a really simple antiderivative. We basically integrate x cubed plus x from 0 to 2. The actual calculation here at the end should be very minimal. The antiderivative straightforward using the power rule, we should get here 12 pi for the volume. All right, now as we continue through the course, we can come back and revisit these ideas of uh, kind of uh, area between curves, various volume questions once we have other integration methods. But for the time being, we only really have u substitution at our disposal. Uh, most of the antiderivatives involve just the basic power rule for uh, powers of x. All right, now really, that's it. There's um, not a whole lot to the shell method. It's just a different formula, the volume uh, formula given as the integral of 2 pi x times f of x. All right, well, as we saw earlier, for uh, area between curves, we could change the orientation. So instead of having the boundary curves given as y as a function of x, maybe we have boundary curves for a region given x as a function of y. So let's take a look at a version. The version we stated so far, 2 pi x times f of x, that's integrated with respect to x. There's a similar version where it's an integration with respect to y. Everything is switched. The region is then bounded by functions of y, so x as a function of y. And also, the axis of rotation is switched to being rotated around the x-axis. So here, we won't go through and derive it. Basically, we'll just switch x's to y's and functions of x to functions of y. So it's a different orientation, kind of flipped on the side. Similar argument gives you this volume formula. Instead of 2 pi x times f of x, it's 2 pi y times a function of y. We integrate that with respect to y. Notice the distance from the axis of rotation, the x-axis, up to that horizontally oriented shell. That distance is y units. That's where um, the change comes from. All right, now these are two versions. The clue, one of them, the first, was rotated uh, the region around the y-axis. Here, this new version, it's rotated the region around the x-axis. 
So there's going to be some examples where we could apply multiple volume formulas, disk washer method, or now this integration with respect to Y shell method version. And let's take a look at some of those. All right, so let's take a look at example two. The question here is going to ask us to use the shell method, since that's what we're learning about right now. This question could also be done using the washer method. Notice here, at the very end, we're rotating around the x-axis. Rotation around the x-axis is exactly when we can apply the disk or washer method. We'll give that as a follow-up, but see if you can make an attempt at this using the new shell method where we integrate with respect to y. As we saw earlier with area between curves, your boundary curves, y as a function of x, solve them for x as a function of y individually. We'll check in in a few minutes. All right, let's go ahead and finish this up. I want to hurry up and finish this lecture since it uh, tends to get a little bit cold here at night. <clears throat> All right, so let's start with a sketch of the region. So we've seen this before. We have an upper boundary curve, y equals x, lower boundary curve, y equals x squared. Standard region. These curves intersect. We can solve for the points of intersection, x equals 0 and x equals 1. All right, so, so far, it sounds very similar to questions when we covered with the washer method. All right, we're not going to use that here. We want to use the shell method since we want to kind of see how that applies. All right, now your sketch here, recall your shells are oriented differently due to rotating around the x-axis. Your shells are oriented horizontally, parallel. Uh, due to the rotation around the x-axis. So maybe use the sketch here to see if you can complete that. Pause the video, check in in about a minute if you need to make a further attempt. All right, let's wrap this one up. So I drew the sketch here with the orientation for our shell. Kind of the shell here is oriented parallel to the x-axis since we rotate the region around the x-axis. And we want to determine that distance between the outer and inner part as a function of y. Now the first part is to solve each of your boundary curves, y as a function of x, for now x as a function of y. Pretty simple equations. That shouldn't be complicated yet. So we get x equals y, and then x equals square root of y, or y to the 1 half. So x equals y to the 1 half is your rightmost boundary function, and then uh, x equals y is the leftmost. To find that distance between the uh, kind of left and rightmost curve as a function of y, just subtract. All right, so uh, kind of in that orientation, the, um, the height of your shell is given by g of y as y to the 1 half minus y. All right, so that is basically the function that will plug in to the integration with respect to y version for the shell method. Don't forget, there is a factor of y, like the integration with respect version has a factor of x. So here, we have an integral from 0 to 1. 0 and 1 refer to the y interval now, which coincidentally is the same as the x interval, 0 to 1. And we integrate 2 pi y times g of y. And we integrate that with respect to y. Now here, it's pretty much the same thing as what we've been encountering. We can apply the power rule for antiderivatives. Just a little more work dealing with the uh, rational exponent y to the 1 half. But 
should be a piece of cake. Take your time, apply the power rule, distribute that factor of y in, y times y to the one half gives you y to the three halves, and then you also get y squared. So if you're careful, apply the power rule, plug in zero and one, you should get two pi divided by 15. All right, and uh, this actually made quick work. Here the clue given uh, kind of a y's as functions of x, when you rotate around the x-axis, it's the rotation around the x-axis that was the clue to maybe set this up with the shell method as an integration with respect to y. All right, so we have our answer. We're basically done, but I feel like I would not thoroughly prepare you everything for everything if we didn't take a look at how we could apply the shell method to this. Now, if you are feeling adventurous and up for it, pause the video, see if you can apply uh, the washer method here. You should get the same answer, two pi over 15. We'll check in momentarily. All right, let's wrap up with the follow-up applying the washer method. Here we're rotating around the x-axis with the washer method and our region from the, uh, the region down to the axis of rotation is presented with a hole, basically going from y equals x squared down to the axis of rotation, the x-axis. Okay, so we can use in our sketch in the upper left corner there at the top, the topmost curve, is y equals x, that serves as the outer radius. And then y equals x squared is the inner or lower boundary curve that acts as the inner radius. So we basically integrate for here, the washer method, pi times the outer radius squared minus the inner radius squared. So just be careful, you're squaring x squared. That gives you x to the fourth. And if you carry this out, for an integration with respect to x, you should also arrive at 2 pi over 15. So we should get the same answer. Both methods, shell method and washer method, lead to the same result. All is well. Fabric of space-time hasn't unraveled. The rules for mathematics are consistent.